Hey, what's up, everybody? Gonna do a classic rock reaction, man. This is a complimentary quad, and it's featuring the music of Ron Pickpen McKernan. He is uh, one of the uh, frontmen from the Grateful Dead, and uh, he's also a member, I understand, from the 27 Club. Very, very instrumental in um, the development of uh, the Grateful Rocks, or the Grateful Dead's signature rock sound. And uh, yeah, man, very, very sorely missed by many, many fans. Um, ever since I started my channel, I've just kept hearing his name and how great he was and what could have been, you know, had he been with us even for another decade, you know, that sort of thing. He's one of those great kind of icons that haunts the platform of classic rock and just a genre specific of modern music. So yeah, man, definitely we should take a good look at uh, Pigpen. Man, uh, before I pop this off though, let me just uh, give you a rundown of what we're checking out. Starting with I'm a King Bee, followed by Katie May, followed by Chinatown Shuffle, and finally Good Lovin'. And um, before I pop this off, I just want to give a quick shout out to Jack Cerro. Jack, thanks very much, man. I appreciate the uh, recommendation. And Jack's got a note. He says, uh, hey, Wayne, I think it's time for a Ron Pigpen McKernan tribute. Many of Pig's mo uh, best moments come in the middle of long blues vamps. But I have managed to find some shorter songs and one longer Pigpen led rap that illustrates why he was such a fantastic frontman during the Dead's formative years. Thanks. Hope you enjoy. Right on, Jack. Thank you, man. I know I will. So, let's hit this up, man. The Grateful Dead. I'm a King Bee. Let's get it. I can listen to this jam all day long. Don't even need vocals. In my damn car. Well, I'm a king bee Buzzing around the old house You know I'm a king bee, darling And make honey, baby. Let me Just fly up inside. Me buzz up inside. Harpo Slim. I'm young and able to buzz all. Together, 
We can make some honey. Worlds that the never world ain't ever known. This slow, staggering gem. That's the reason why I like Muddy Waters music so much. You ever heard him do Manish Boy or Uchikuchi Man? Slow bluesy shuffle. Love it. Yeah, I'm a king bee. Want you to be my queen. I'm a king bee.
Yeah, I remember this tune, man. It's on my dad's playlist. Uh, yo, Piggy? Yeah, man. Yeah, I know Piggy. You know Piggy? That's how he talks to me when I tell him what I've done. And when I've uh, done a Grateful Dead reaction and, you know, uh, featuring Pigpen. He, oh, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I've seen Piggy many times, many times. That's how he talks, right? <laughs> oh, man. Let me tell you. The elements uh, that's present in your growing up that sometimes you're not aware of. Yeah, you know, uh, these guys, man, Grateful Dead. Um, it hadn't occurred to me just how instrumental they were a present in my um, upbringing uh, until I started doing this uh, reaction thing. And uh, hearing these songs, I'm like, yo, man, I know this shit. I know a lot of this shit like word for word. And then it, it dawned on me that, yeah, it's back in the day, you know, I've heard this stuff so constant so often. My pops and all of his boys from camp, you know, they were just crazy deadheads. They would get out of camp, man. And they would hop on a bus sometimes. Sometimes so many of them, you got, you had to get a bus going. And uh, they would go all over the U.S., wherever, you know, Dylan would be playing or uh, the dead would be playing, you know, just all over the place, man. And uh, they saw the dead dozens of times. Can you believe that shit? Wow. The envy, <laughs> you know? So, and the way he answers me, right? As if he's, as if they're old friends. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. You know, I, I hit that shit up in the day. Yeah, man. I was this close to the man. You know, that's the way he talks. And I'm like, yo, envy and envy. Let me tell you, green with the shit, you know, that uh, my pops and uh, old man Rufus had it so good back in the day. I'm telling you, y'all, I was born in the wrong damn time. So, Grateful Dead, Ron Pigpen McKernan, let's give the man some love, Ronald Charles McKernan, September 8, 1945, March 8, 1980, 1973, known as Pigpen, was an American singer and musician. He was a founding member of the San Francisco band Grateful Dead and played in the group from 65 to 72. McKiernan grew up heavily influenced by African-American music, particularly the blues, and enjoyed listening to his father's collection of records and taught himself how to play harmonica and piano. That's like me, but I never learned to play an instrument. <laughs> he began socializing around the San Francisco Bay Area, becoming friends with Jerry Garcia. After the pair had played in various folk and jug bands, McKernan suggested they form an electric group, which became the Grateful Dead. He was the band's original frontman, as well as playing harmonica and, elect and electric organ, but Garcia and bassist Phil Lesh's influence on the band became increasingly stronger as they embraced psychedelic rock. Yeah, so they had their folk rock beginning and then they uh, got into the psychedelic. McKernan struggled to keep up with the changing music, causing the group to hire keyboardist Tom Constantin, with McKernan's contributions essentially limited to vocals, harmonica, and percussion from November 1968 to January of 1970. He continued to be a frontman in concert for some numbers, including his interpretations of Bobby Bland's Turn On Your Love Light and The Rascals' Good Lovin'. Unlike the other members of The Grateful Dead, McKernan avoided psychedelic drugs, preferring to drink alcohol, namely whiskey and flavored fortified wine. By 71, his health had been affected by alcoholism and liver damage and doctors advised him to stop touring. Following a hiatus, he resumed touring with the group in December of 71, but was forced to retire from touring altogether in June of 72. Kiernan was found dead of a gastrointestinal hemorrhage on March 8, 1973, age 27, and is buried in Altamesa Memorial Park in Palo Alto. 27. Wow, man. That is so damn young. During any time period, that is young as hell. I'm a King Bee. I'm a King Bee. 
is a swamp blues song written and first recorded by Slim Harpo in 57. It's been performed and recorded by numerous blues and other artists. Written by Slim Harpo, whose legal name was James Moore, the song was recorded in March of 57. In 2008, Slim Harpo's I'm a King Bee received a Grammy Hall of Fame award, which honors recordings of lasting qualitative or historical significance. The song has been recorded by a variety of musicians. Yeah, man, I'm not going through this damn list. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's skip down. Let's skip down to um, the Grateful Dead stuff. I'm a King Bee appears on Dave's Picks Volume 10. It's a three CD live album by the Grateful Dead. It contains the complete concert recorded December 12, 69 at the Thelma Music Venue in LA, California. It was produced as a limited edition of 14,000 numbered copies and was released May 1st, 2014. On all music, Fred Thomas wrote, quote, Dave's Picks Volume 10, Thelma Los Angeles 12-12-69, captures the group in performance directly before they would enter the studio to record what would go on to be one of their most loved albums and they're working through the material by playing seven of the eight songs that would be included there as well as an uncommonly high number of songs written or led by keyboarders Pigpen. On the last of the three night stand at a mysterious California club simply called Thelma, the band turned in stellar performances of the aforementioned Working Man's Dead Material as well as a half hour jam on their bluesy live staple Turn On Your Love Light. All right. So that is some background info on I'm a King B. Let's hit up our next track, man. Katie May. All right. The Grateful Dead. Katie May. Let's get it. I'm trying to do, man. What you did? Oh, I didn't hear what they said to him. <clears throat> Let me make my mistakes on my own. I don't need your help. Let's get this thing stuck up here. Let's see what happens. What was that? Ah, well, now if I don't blow it too bad, this is that. Well, it's one of them songs, you know. Well, you know, Katie May's a good girl. Folks say she don't run around at night. Well, you know, Katie May's a good girl. I made a mistake and she don't run around at night. Yes, and you can bet your last dollar Katie May will treat you right Now some folks say she must be a Cadillac But I say she got to be a T-model Ford You know, some folks say she must be a Cadillac. I say she got to be a team model for Yeah, so she got the shape all right. She can't carry. But you can't carry no heavy load. <laughs> And she walked just like her daddy got old wells in her backyard. Oh, 
You know, and she walks just like she got a old wheels in her whole backyard. You know, and every time she gets to working, that woman she never will have to work too hard. I said goodbye, goodbye, <coughs> poor Katie. Here's the last words I'm got to say. Eh, hey, na 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 na, poor Katie. Last words I'm got to say. Cause if I don't meet you tomorrow, I'm going to get you early in the next day. <laughs> Thank you. That was awesome. Damn. Katie May. <laughs> Piggy unplugged. <laughs> that was great, man. Great, great, great song, great singer, great delivery. Love his interaction with the crowd. Definitely, I can see why this guy is so sorely missed. Why he was one of a kind, man. All right. Katie May. <clears throat> Katie May appears on History of the Grateful Dead, Volume 1, Bear's Choice. It's a live album by the Grateful Dead. Released in July of 73 on Warner Brothers Records, it offers concert highlights, recording... Hi oh, damn. Come on, Wayne. Jesus, man. Uh, Warner Brothers Records, it offers concert highlights, recorded February 13th and 14th, 1970, at the Fillmore East in New York City. Often known simply as Bear's Choice, the title references band soundman Owsley Bear Stanley. It was originally intended to be the first volume of a series. The album peaked at number 60 on the Billboard 200. Recording The album was recorded during a period when the Grateful Dead were playing concerts consisting of electric sets plus an acoustic set, revisiting their roots as a folk jug band. Reflecting this approach, though it was ultimately released three years later, the album has an acoustic side and an electric side. As per policy at the time at promoter Bill Graham's Fillmore East, the band played both an early show and a late show. The recordings were culled from the uh, February 13 and 14, 1970 late shows. Bonus tracks on reissues include, uh, what the hell is this word? Contemporaneous recordings from Graham's Fillmore West in San Francisco. I don't see that word often. <laughs> Dick's Picks Volume 4. An album released in 1996 offers additional material from these same performances. The original album was recorded and produced by Owsley Bear Stanley, the Dead's then soundman, who chose his favorite tracks. He compiled it as a tribute of sorts to Ron Pigpen McKernan, the band's original keyboard player and blues aficionado, who died during the production of the release. As such, it features three songs on which Pigpen sings lead, including All of Side 2. Band manager Brock Scully said, Big Pen went out on the stage and sat down in a chair. It was the only time he ever did it. He sat down and played the bottleneck guitar. 
who had been pushing him for years to do it, and he finally just got loose enough and comfortable enough with the audience there at the Fillmore to go out and do it. He went out and sat down on the stage. It was Valentine's Day, and he had a honey out in the crowd. He went out and played Katie May to her. Immediately following that, Bobby Weir and Garcia went out and did the same thing. They sat down and played acoustic guitars. They don't do that stuff anymore." Unquote. Wow, really, really, really cool uh, background information on this tune and what it means and the history. I love doing reactions like this and kind of getting in behind the song, getting in behind the music, you know what I mean? That was really cool. All right, man, let's hit up our third track. Chinatown Shuffle. Grateful Dead. Chinatown Shuffle. Let's get it. One of the shortest numbers ever from the Grateful Dead, man. Chinatown Shuffle. Uh, Chinatown Shuffle appears on Dave's Picks Volume 14. It's a three CD live album by the Grateful Dead containing the concert recorded March 26, 1972 at the Academy of Music in New York. It was released May 1st, 2015 as a limited edition of 16,500 numbered copies. Recorded during a seven-day run at the venue, the shows were the final American Grateful Dead shows before the Europe 72 tour commenced. A bonus disc was included. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry guys, drank too much coffee. A bonus disc was included with shipments of the album to 2015 uh, Dave's Picks subscribers, containing performances called from uh, other nights 
of the seven concert run. Additional material from these shows had been released in 2003 as Dick Picks, Dick's Picks Volume 30 and the selection from March 22nd and 23rd, 1972, constituted the bonus discs of Rockin' the Rhyme. Dave's Picks Volume 14 was listed at number 31 on the Billboard 200 for the week of May 16, 2015. <coughs> Critical Reception On All About Jazz, Doug Collette wrote, This latest entry in the ongoing archive series features... Jeez, let me try that again, guys. <coughs> this latest entry in the ongoing archive series features is an unusual selection of tunes, at least insofar as this concert's position in the iconic band's tam timeline. The now famous songs that debuted in England and elsewhere in the next month are conspicuously absent here. Jack Straw is an exception, in place of which appear no less notable numbers such as Trekken, Warfret, and Sugar Magnolia, plus a catch of show pieces from keyboardist vocalist Ron Pigpen McKiernan. Okay, man. So that is some information, background info on Chinatown Shuffle. <clears throat> and I'm having a hell of a time with my damn throat. Let me get a little uh, hydrated before we uh, hit up our last track. Hang on a sec. Oop. Okay, y'all, let's hit up our last track, man. And that is The Grateful Dead doing Good Lovin'. Let's get it. This is 11 minutes long, man. Damn. Wow. 
back of that shot. Ocean of people. to clap your hands. I want every single soul in this place to clap your hands. Get it going a little louder. Just a little louder. I can't hardly hear you. Come on now. Make your own music. Let me hear you. Your music, just a little louder. Let me hear you. This is what you call an extended jam, man. Do you feel all right? Feel all right. Feel all right. Feel all right. Let me hear you. All right. All right. All right. All right. That's what I want to hear.
I wonder what the longest dead track is. Let me know if you know that. I'm guessing well past an hour. I didn't know, I didn't know what was wrong with me, I didn't know what was wrong with me, but then I found out something I need, all I need is, all I need is, all I need is a little bit of love, put yourself together. yourself together, put yourself together, turn around and talk to your brother, that's all you got to do now, everybody in this place, turn around and say hello to the people sending this time. Do. You just gotta say howdy, 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 howdy. Take off your clothes and have a good old see half the people in the crowd actually stripping their clothes off. certainly was uh, an entertaining person. Got the charisma, you know, he can get people feeling good. Yeah, totally get why this guy was such a force, man. Um, so Good Lovin', Good Lovin'. Good Lovin' is a song written by Rudy Clark and Arthur Resnick that was number a number one hit single for the Young Rascals in 66 original version. The song was first recorded by Lemmy Be Good, actually Canton, Ohio R&B singer Lemmy Snell, in March of 65, and written by Rudy Clark. The following month, it was recorded with different lyrics by R&B artist The Olympics, produced by Jerry uh, Ragavoy. This version reached number 81 on the Billboard Pop Singles chart. Young Rascal version. The tale has been told that Rascal Felix Cavalier heard the Olympics recording on the New York City radio station, and the group added it to their concert repertoire, using the same lyrics and virtually the same arrangement as the Olympics version. Co-producer Tom Dowd captured this live feel on their 1966 recording, even though the group did not think the performance held together well. Good Lovin' rose to the top of the Billboard Pop Singles chart in the spring of 66 and represented the Young Rascals' first real hit. Good Lovin' is one of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's 500 songs that shaped rock and roll and was ranked 333 on Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Songs of All Times list. Writer Dave Marsh placed it at number 108 in his 1989 book, The Heart of Rock and Soul, uh, the 1001 Greatest Singles Ever Made, saying it's the greatest example ever of a remake surpassing the quality of an original without changing a thing about the arrangement." Unquote. Other versions. Hmm, man. Yo, just a whole shit ton of versions. Let's skip down to the 
Yeah, let's get down to the Grateful Dead. <clears throat> a popular version was by the Grateful Dead, who made it a workhorse of their concert rotation, appearing almost every year from 69 on. It was sung in the early years during uh, the 1960s by Ron Pickpen McKernan and later by Bob Weir. The Weir rendition was recorded for the group's 1978 Shakedown Street album and came in for a good amount of criticism. Rolling Stone said it, quote, features aimless ensemble work and vocals that Bob Weir should never have attempted, unquote. On November 11, 1978, The Grateful Dead performed it on Saturday Night Live. I gotta check that out. And I also have to check out Bob Weir's version versus uh, Ron's version and uh, see if uh, Rolling Stone has any credibility in regards to what they judge as being good or not. But I'm not going to get on to Rolling Stone. They did redeem themselves over the decades, you know what I'm saying? So uh, that's past tense. So I'm not going to go back and regurgitate all of that. So overall, man, really, really good. Solid, solid quad. The last number was 11 minutes, but it didn't seem like it. You know, that's a really, really nice extended jam. Awesome, man. Yeah, having uh, Ron in the lineup really put the Grateful Dead on the map, no doubt. And uh, I bet for a lot of you, man, when you think the Grateful Dead, you still think about Pigpen, don't you? Yeah, let me know what this guy means to you, man. There's a lot of fans out there of the Grateful Dead, and uh, I'm sure that you hold him in the highest of regards in regards to um, the formation of the Grateful Dead and their rise in, in popularity. Yeah, so give me a little account of how you feel about this great guy, man. All right, so that concludes our look, our spotlight on Ron Pigpen McKernan, man, of Grateful Dead fame, 27 years old. Could you imagine what could have been just give him another decade to work with. Unbelievable. But he did leave us with some really, really cool stuff all the same, man. All right. So, Jack, thank you very much for a really good look at this guy. And um, I hear him, I've heard his name um, all over the place ever since I started my channel. I've heard it from my pops, you know. So uh, I know that he's definitely very, very um, important on the landscape of modern music. So, cheers to you. Ron Pigpen McKiernan, rest in peace, sir. All right, you guys, <clears throat> that's it for me. Sorry about my damn throat giving me so many troubles. I'm going to go and get my ass hydrated. So you guys have yourselves a good one. Take care, and I'll see you tomorrow in another reaction. Peace out.